Hey everybody, my name is Jenny Lessman. I am a physician assistant in OBGYN at Sanford Health here in Detroit Lakes. Today I'm going to talk to you about hereditary breast and ovarian cancer syndrome. Now keep in mind that the vast majority of cancers are sporadic and they happen by chance. Uh, but for the sake of today's talk, I'm going to talk about uh, the cancers that may have a genetic component to them. So first I'm going to start by telling you my family history. When my mom was 56 years old, she was diagnosed with stage 2 ovarian cancer. About a year later, her only sister was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. <clears throat> My mom went to go visit my aunt while she was having her drains removed from her mastectomy and they were walking in the hospital and they saw a health fair going on and they ran into a lady at one of her booths and she ended up being a genetic counselor. And after chatting with my mom and my aunt for a little bit, she quickly learned why my aunt was in, a ho in the hospital and um, my family history. And she became concerned and she said, has anybody ever talked to you two about genetic testing? And neither one of them had. Not their, do not their primary care doctors, not their oncologists, not their surgeons. So she said, would you come see me after you get out of the hospital? So an appointment was made for the next day and my mom and my aunt went to go talk to this lady in her clinic. They drew out a family tree um, and they identified two aunts um, of theirs that had female issues that they doctored for at the Mayo, but back then nobody really knew what they were because nobody talked about it. Well, they did a little bit of research and they found out one had breast cancer and one had ovarian cancer. So things really started to make sense. The decision was made to test my aunt first for this hereditary breast and ovarian cancer syndrome. So she had her blood drawn and a couple of weeks later we came to find out that she has a gene mutation on the BRAC1 gene. The decision was then made to test my mom next, and my mom too was positive for the same gene mutation. Well, you have a 50-50 chance of passing these gene mutations to your offspring. Um, I'm on my mom's oldest daughter, so the decision was made to test me next, and I too am positive. Uh, so are my only two sisters. I have a cousin that's positive, an uncle that's positive, and numerous other family members down the line. Uh, long story short, about a year after my aunt's diagnosis, she died of breast cancer, but my mom is still a survivor. Uh, she has battled with her ovarian cancer twice now. Uh, she also went on to have a prophylactic mastectomy, so she doesn't develop breast cancer. Um, I like to call myself a previvor, and my sisters are previvors too. Um, when people ask if I feel bad about knowing this information, I say absolutely not. I feel grateful. I feel lucky for knowing this information because it can save my life someday. Because knowledge is power and hope. And if I wouldn't have known this information, I could be the next one that's to develop cancer. Um, I've been doing yearly breast MRIs, twice yearly pelvic ultrasounds and blood draws to make sure I'm okay. The very first breast MRI I had identified precancer and I already had a lumpectomy. So how do I identify people in my practice that may be at risk for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer? It's all by family history. So it is so important to know your family history and if you don't, it's a good conversation to have. If I'm doing a physical or meeting with somebody in the office and I've identified some red flags in their family history, um, I may proceed with testing. So here are the, the red flags that I pay attention to. Breast cancer. You have to have three family members on one side of your family that have breast cancer at any age. Or you can have only two family members on one side affected with breast cancer, but one needs to be diagnosed under the age of 50. Or you can have one family member in your family at age 45 or less. 
This also means if you yourself have personally been infected as well, um, it, it raises a red flag as well, especially premenopausal breast cancer under the age of 50. Also, anybody that has a family history of male breast cancer at any age, male breast cancer is a huge red flag. If you are of the Jewish population, people who are Jewish have a very high chance of having one of these gene mutations. And finally, another risk factor or another red flag is ovarian cancer in yourself or your family at any age. That is a red flag for testing as well. So here are the risks if somebody carries one of these gene mutations. It is not a guarantee that you're going to get cancer. In the general population, the average, your chance of getting breast cancer is about one in eight in a lifetime. These people who carry these gene mutations, like myself, up to an 87% chance of getting breast cancer. And not only that, but having one breast cancer, you are more likely to get a breast cancer in the other breast if you carry one of these gene mutations. Also, ovarian cancer, less than 1% in the general population that you will develop ovarian cancer. Up to a 44% chance of developing ovarian cancer if you carry this gene mutation. This is a big deal. Ovarian cancer is very deadly because it often has symptoms that are not specific and it's often caught very late. So these people need to really be found because it can greatly reduce their risk of getting ovarian cancer or dying from ovarian cancer. If you are tested and you're positive for one of these gene mutations, what do you do about it? Well, look at me, look at my family. My mom went on to have a prophylactic mastectomy so she doesn't get the breast cancer. I myself will have my ovaries removed after I'm done having children by the time I'm age 40. Also, I have my yearly breast MRIs and I have my pelvic ultrasounds and my CA125s yearly so I can detect it if it, if it comes early. I may eventually go on to have a prophylactic mastectomy down the road too. It just kind of depends on where I'm at. Um, there are also medicines that you can talk about. If you have a prophylactic mastectomy and no breast cancer is found, by taking your breasts off, you can lower your risk of breast cancer by 96%. If you have your ovaries and tubes removed, as a BRAC positive patient, you can lower your risk of getting ovarian cancer by 96% and also breast cancer by 68, up to 68%. So that's why I've chosen that I'll eventually have my ovaries removed because it decreases both of my risks. So how is this testing done? It is simple. You just have to find a provider in your area that will test you. I test, I'm a huge advocate for testing. Dr. Duraney at the clinic tests, Ronica Wall tests, and so does Stacy Zimney in family practice. Should men in your family be tested? Absolutely, my uncle was tested and he's positive. And why is that a big deal? Because he has a daughter and a son and his daughter is also positive. Not only does it increase their risk, because men and women can both pass this gene mutation. Does insurance pay for this? Good news, the vast majority of insurances pay the vast majority of the cost. Um, often, many of them pay more than 90% of the cost. Can your insurance company discriminate you for knowing this genetic testing? No. There are two laws in the United States that protect you against genetic discrimination. The GINA law, Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act and the HIPAA law. And there is no way insurance can drop you, deny you, or increase your rates for knowing your genetic results. So the take home message today is that the vast majority of cancer is sporadic and it happens by chance. But one in 400 families will be affected by hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. And the risk of getting cancer is very high in these families. So if you've identified some red flags by listening today in your family history, please see your provider about possible testing because it just may save your life. Thank you.
Thank you for watching Wellness for Life.